It's amazing what ChatGPT combined with the power of Replit can do for us no coders. In the last video, ChatGPT helped me build a website in under seven minutes entirely for free. Today, we're going to continue that and build a full blown custom website that uses Airtable as its back end and it draws information from Airtable and shows it in your web page with no actual no code app builder other than ChatGPT and a free Replit plan. And I ran into lots of dead ends and errors and I'll show you the process and methodology that I applied in order to get the those breakthroughs and to be able to keep going with it even at points where I hadn't a clue what was going on. So where I'm going to start today is I'm going to use the exact same system prompt that I showed in the first video which is basically to tell ChatGPT that they are a website developer that are helping me as a no coder to build a website inside of Replit and I've explained to her that I don't know code and I would really appreciate if it could help me basically just explain exactly what I need to do on the base that I don't know how to code. And what I've done as a head start on today is I've basically taken all of the code out of the Replit environment here. So I've copied all of the HTML and I've copied all of the CSS and that's all we currently have. There is nothing in the script section here yet. And I have put that into my prompt and I've just said, this is the entire code for the website this far. This HTML and CSS was written entirely by ChatGPT and I demonstrate exactly how that was done in the last video. So if you're completely lost at this point and you'd like to begin this project from the beginning, I recommend checking out that video now and coming back here. And it's because I'm starting a brand new conversation here with ChatGPT and I'm actually going to increase the length here again so that it can give me a sizable response back. And um, if we scroll down, I've marked out this is HTML, this part here. And if we scroll down, and keep going. I've also marked out that this is the CSS part and this is where the CSS starts. And if we come down to the bottom, it has, it marks this where I've marked it to the end so that ChatGPT knows that that's the end of the code part of the prompt. When we built the website in the last video, we hooked up a form that was able to send data to our Airtable base. ChatGPT was good enough to warn us that the way it was built at that point was actually really unsecure and it was actually exposing what's called an Airtable API key in the front end of our website. And what that means is that theoretically anybody that has a little bit of web knowledge could come along. They could go in and they could actually find out what your Airtable API key is. Your Airtable API key is the equivalent of a password. So I've simply asked it to, um, then can you help me to use either Python or Node.js in the back end so they don't have to expose my Airtable credentials to in the front end. And this Python or Node.js was something that ChatGPT had already suggested to me in the last video you'll see. And I just said, well, I'm going to explore that further because I don't know Python or Node.js and I'll see how far I can get with this so that we don't expose our API details when trying to hook up our website here with our Airtable backend. And here we go. I'm going to hit submit and let's see what it comes up with. Okay. So it's finished what seemed to be quite a comprehensive response. So let's just get into it and we'll um, see what instruction it has given us and I'll follow it to the letter of what it's saying to do. Okay. So here we are. Sure, I can help you with that. Since you're using Replit, I'll provide a solution using Node.js with Express. You need to create a new file called server.js. So I'll go into the Replit environment here and I'll create a new file called server.js. And just click that. And it's now giving me some code that I need to copy into it. And I'm just going to copy this code exactly as it is here. It obviously has my details there because it was already in the HTML that I posted above. What I'm talking about is the Airtable API key here. And again, as I said, this is a dummy API that I've set up under a test account. So I don't mind exposing it here. And so if I come down and I'm down to the bottom of this uh, script, I believe, I'll just make sure I have it right there. Control C and come back into Replit and I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to hit run. The next step, now you need to install the required dependencies for the server creating a package.json file with the following content. Okay, so I don't really follow that, but... um. I'm going to just create a file called package.json, package.json. And there's the file there, package of files. Okay. It's gone into a different section here inside of Replit. So I'll copy that and come in here, package.json file, and I'll hit run. I just hit run out of habit after every edit or update that I make. And just to check that nothing that are broken. Finally, update your Replit configuration file dot Replit with the following content to run the server run equals NPM. Okay. So I'm not sure I follow that or where to do that. So what I will probably do is ask, I'm going to ask ChatGPT, where do I need to do that? Because I'm not sure. Okay. So that has given me another response here. And it just says on the left-hand side of your Replit workspace, 
click on the three vertical dots next to the project name. Next, it must be this. And then, oh, show hidden files. And there's a dot rep replit file. Okay, perfect. Said to replace all of the content in here, but there's quite a lot of stuff in here. So I'm just wondering if that um, is actually what we should do is correct to clear this out completely and replace it with. Okay, submit. My apologies for not mentioning that earlier. If there is already some content, you should keep that existing content at the new line to it rather than replace the entire content. Okay, that possibly saved me going down a wormhole there. Here's what you should do. Open the replica file. Look for the line that starts with run equals if it exists. If you find a line that starts with run equals, replace that line with the following. If there is no line that starts with run, simply add the new line at the end of the file. It just do, does it let's do a control F in here, run equals. Okay, so I've done a search, definitely nothing like that. So I'm just going to create a new row and put in this exactly as it has asked me to do it here. I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to click uh, run. So at this point, ChatGPT told me that we should be good to go. The Airtable API key should now be masked. And I decided that it would be best to test this or to look for a way to demonstrate that it was actually masked, but I didn't really know how to do it. So guess what I did? Submit. Okay. So come back to me here. I think we'll be able to follow this one and see, and just to prove that our Air Airtable API is not being exposed in the front end. So it just says, yes, you can use the browser's developer tools to demonstrate that your front end is calling your server instead of the Airtable API directly. Here's how you can do that. Open the website in new tab as you did before. Right click anywhere here on the page and select inspect. The developer tools will open typically at the bottom or the side of the browser. Click on the network tab. With the network tab open, fill out your form on your website and click the send button. And as you submit the form, you will see network activity in the network tab. You should see a request to your server endpoint forward slash submit form. Click on that request. If the request details in the request details, you can check the headers tab. You should see that your request is being sent to your server. This demonstrates that the front end is calling your server instead of the Airtable API directly. So if we just come in and we'll just try and actually do this and see is it working. So we're on the web page here. I'm just going to click right and click inspect like it told me to. And I'm going to go to the network tab. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. I'm going to fill out this form here again. So here we go. Send. Okay, well, something's happened and I think I need to drag this up. Okay, so here's this form submission thing. Fetch. And if we click on this, it said to go into headers. Okay. Okay, so it is still, <laughs> so it is just calling the Airtable API directly. So what this meant is that my Airtable API key is still showing up. And this is what ChatGPT meant when it said that your Airtable API is exposed. Anybody that is familiar with a web browser will be able to go into this exact view in the web browser and see your a API in that headers section in the network tab. Okay, I did that test run and I can see that my Airtable API is still being called directly from the web browser. And so my Air table API key is still being exposed. Okay. Submit. Just see what it gives me here. Okay. I apologize for any confusion based on the code you provided earlier. The front end should not be calling the air table. Let's just double check your HTML code to ensure that it's using the updated JavaScript code for your form submission. Please make sure that the form submission event listener in your HTML script tag looks like this, this code snippet in the HTML file here, document.getElement.ie.contactForm. This is where it has my API key and where it's still getting me to do the direct API calls. But I don't know whether maybe ChatGPT had told me to replace this earlier on in the con in the conversation, but I don't remember. Maybe I brushed over it. Anyway, the main thing at this point is I need to just replace all of this with the new script that it gave me. If I hit run. Okay. So when we hit send here, fingers crossed, hopefully this might show me a different result this time. Uh, we've got a 404. Something went wrong. Please try again later. Okay. Okay, so after a little bit messing back and forth with ChatGPT, I'm now at the point where I'm about to do another test. And all I've done in the meantime is I've asked it to look into the .replit file and uh, this part here because I was going around in circles on the other thing and I felt like maybe ChatGPT just needed to be given a uh, move back on track. I don't know. I did not know if it was something else, but I felt that whatever it was trying in t inside of these files, it was running into dead ends and it wasn't working. So I felt that the error probably was not in there and was somewhere else in the build. 
And so I just remembered earlier that it had asked me to put in this particular line here inside the replit. And I asked if, is this where the error could be? And it told me to run it manually inside of shell instead. Instead, And so what that meant was I keyed in in here, npm install and, and then npm start, just like it had said. Again, I got some further errors here and I copied and pasted the error back into OpenAI. And it finally got me to the point where I split up the commands and wrote npm start. And it now seems to have this message listening on port 3000, which I'm hopeful that it is now going to work once I submit this form. So the big show has filled in his messages and we are on this network pane here to see what comes up when we hit send. And I am hopeful here. Looks like that's working. All right. So if we come into Airtable and look, it's working there. And if we just click into this, it's now no longer using the Airtable API directly. So naturally I asked ChatGPT what was going on here and how does this work? So essentially it's this server.js file is creating what's called a, an express server powered by node. And, um, it is essentially back end JavaScript code is what I gather is what it's doing, which means that your website basically contacts this server in the background. And from this node.js slash express server is where the Airtable API is being called rather than directly from the web browser. Okay. So now we've got a form that is hooked up to our Airtable backend. Now, what we want it to do is we want to have information go the other way. So instead of users sending information from our website into our Airtable backend, we want our Airtable backend to send information to our website and um, be able to display that information. We're going to use Airtable here as a content management system. I've whipped up three dummy blogs here. I did have some help again from ChatGPT writing these. And what we want to do is each row here represents a blog post. So each record in this table re represents a blog. I've given it a name, so a title for the blog, an image being it's just a picture for the blog, the blurb, which is basically your sort of introduction or your first paragraph to give an idea of what that blog is about. And then the actual blog content, which is going to be the actual long form article itself. And what we want to be able to do is essentially show this information in a list page on our website so that users can browse our well, currently only three articles. And then they can click on whichever one they like the look of. And when they click on it, it will dynamically show the rest of the information here relating to the blog. So if I just give you a, an idea of what that might look like, if we jump into a gallery view in Airtable, we'll only hopefully need to create two new pages on our website, one being the, the page that holds the list of the blog articles. And then when somebody clicks into whichever blog article they click into, it's going to go to the second page, but it will dynamically show the information relating to that blog post that they've clicked on. And then if they go back and they click on a different blog post again, it'll go to the same page, but it's going to dynamically show the information associated with the clicked article. And so blog post, as I said, is a common example, but you could also have to anything, anything that is in lists. So whether it's job postings, whether it's no code tools, whether it's resources, it could be courses inside of a, an online education platform, it, it, anything that's in sort of a list or in a table format inside of Airtable that you want to dynamically uh, have displayed on your website, this approach would be useful for. So here we go. I'll just jump back into ChatGPT. And again, I'm using the same system that we've used in all of the previous parts of this build. And this time the prompt is going to be, hi, this is the complete code for my webpage, which sends a form submission to an Airtable backend via a server.js file. So this is the completed code from the last part of this video. And then at the end of this, Again, I've denoted end to show the end of the code. Can you help me to now add functionality to dynamically display blog posts on my webpage based on blog articles stored in a table called blog posts inside my Airtable database? I.e. I would like a page that shows all of the blog posts in a list. And then when the user clicks on a particular blog post, it opens that blog post and its content dynamically in a new page. So I've basically spelled out exactly what I would like the functionality to be. And again, we'll just see how many iterations it takes us to get this. I'd be very confident we'll be able to do something here. But again, this is the first time I'm trying this. So um, let's just see how it goes. So we'll hit submit. So ChatGPT got me to do a lot of things. It got me to add in two new .html files into the replit environment. One was called blog.html. The other one was blog.js or blogpost.html. It then got me to add a blog.js file and a blogpost.js file. It gave me all the script and the code that I need to put into each of those new files. 
It then asked me to update the server.js file, and I did that exactly as it told me how to do it. And it asked me to restart the server, so I went into the shell and hit npm start and did that. Another thing it got me to do was actually give it the field names for the Airtable database in the backend because it didn't know what the field names were and it was not able to retrieve the field names via the API. So I gave it the field name so that it knew what data it was trying to work with and how to present it well on the front page. There were a few errors back and forth. Um, initially it wasn't showing the data and I was getting some errors. It showed me where to find the errors in the console and I got those and copied and pasted them back into OpenAI into ChatGPT. And then it gave me more code to update in the server.js file and in some of the other files. It also gave me some extra CSS code to put into the CSS file. And after updating all of those things, it started to work. Uh, but it started to look like this, so it didn't look so great. And, um, you know, when I clicked into each of the posts, it didn't work initially. And again, I did a bit of back and forth and then it started to look like this. It wasn't overly formatted. And so I went back and forth and back and forth and it started to look like this. So it was the exact end result I was looking for, that it would look a little bit like our gallery view inside of the Airtable base. It's pulling this information directly from Airtable. And if I click into any of the posts, it's going to show me the blog article post itself. So again, this is the dynamic page. It's the blog post HTML page with the record idea. It is showing the content dynamically for the blog post that I just clicked on. So it's pulling this information directly from the Airtable base and it's displaying it here now in a slightly better format than what we saw before. And I suppose what's really good about this or why this is so cool is because now whenever we add a blog post inside of our content management system here inside of Airtable, it's automatically going to show on our website and it just means that we can be editing and updating our blog content inside of an Airtable environment. For no coders out there, everybody knows the different types of automations and efficiencies that this can bring into your workflow. In one of my other videos, I show how to integrate ChatGPT into Airtable to produce content. So for example, if we came along and we built out this table more and we maybe built an open AI automation into the table whereby we just give it a title name and a blurb and it will write the rest of the blog content for us and possibly even generate an image from DALI and bring it back into our table base. And then say we were to get lots of those articles and we were to have them all in here, what would essentially start to happen is you would have a blog and an SEO optimized machine in your web page. And so even if we just show you what might happen here, if we added three brand new articles, okay, but these are all just the same ones as before. When we come back to our web page and we go back to the blog page, that we're not just have the three articles, but we now have six articles. And if these were obviously all new articles, you know, this would be a cool and efficient way to keep producing and updating content on your website, your content marketing game into action and into an upper, upper gear. So the main take from the video today is not so much what I have built, but more the process and how easy, not easy, but how you can, without being a coder, build things with knowledge that previously only coders would have known how to build. And you can build them and you can test them and you can make sure it's doing things the way you would want it to be done. And you can go back and forth and back and forth. And it does take a little while. I mean, I've edited this video. This video is what, nearly 20 minutes, maybe a bit over. Um, but I mean, I've done stuff here that I previously didn't know how to do. I still probably don't know how to do it, but I know how to get the result and how to work with ChatGPT to be able to do it. And I hope that I'm just giving some sort of inspiration to you that you can pretty much build anything you can dream of nowadays, even as a no coder. And all it takes is a bit of back and forth. You've got now basically a seriously knowledgeable partner in ChatGPT that can enhance and up, up level your abilities. And I would just definitely recommend utilizing that and give it a shot and see what you can build. Set yourself a challenge. Maybe just build something you'd no intention of building before just to see, can you do it and work through the process. And I'm telling you, I've built a few things now. I've even built a game using this exact process and I'm not a game developer. I've never made a game before in my life. And, um, you know, this is something we can all definitely use and benefit from. So I'd love to hear what you're building and let me know about that in the comment section below.